was allowed to bring in some assistants, and who would have thought that I could have brought in eight new coaches? We have 11 coaches on staff. We have really started a move. I mean, we've anything that's been touched in the past, I feel like we changed. Kind of like Warren County, Coffee County's been the doormat of Tennessee football, I felt. I mean, you look back at all the records. As a matter of fact, in this little media guy on the very back, it's every single coach that's ever come through Coffee County. And you can see their records, and as you can tell, right now I'm tied with two other guys and wins, and I haven't coached a game yet. So, we're, we're, we haven't been good in the past, so I've tried to change everything I can. Um, and like I said, the, the administration's been just super nice. When I sat down, they asked me how many coaches would be a perfect staff for me, and I said 11. And they said, no, coach, we, we can't do that. There's no way we can get you 11 coaches. And I said, that's fine. I said, give me what you can. Here's my goals. Here's what I want to do for this program. This is what I want. And after that, it was kind of one of those, all right, you find me 11 guys like you, and we'll, we'll make it happen. And I did. I think I got a great staff. Again, it's in the media guy who all my staff guys are. Coaches around here trying to steal them. Um, last year, roster-wise, we ended the year with 35 kids. The last coaching staff ended with 35. We now have 101. So we have really, my coaching staff has done a great job hitting the hallways, really trying to sell our program uh, in the community. Everything we've done, we've really tried to do it first class and run a first class program and really sell it to the kids that this isn't the same old Coffee County. This isn't the Coffee County that gets beat up by 45 every Friday night and then try to start a fight on the way out of the state. We've been trying to do a little better of that. Player-wise, we have eight returning starters on offense. And again, they're listed in there. They're underlined. We have seven returning on defense. Some of the names that you guys will probably remember from last year, Caleb West on offense, the big six foot five, 300 pound tackle. He's getting some looks from some smaller colleges. They, they love his size. I mean, there's not a lot of six five, 300 pounders walking around. Also, we have on the defensive line, we have Austin Cutshaw, who's six foot three, 300 pounds, and Matt Henniger, who's about six foot, 300 pounds. So we roll out some pretty heavy guys on the D-line and offensive line. Our sophomore running back, D'Angelo Rogier, he started last year as a freshman, six foot one, 200 pounds, had a great offseason, missed one day of weights. Last year, the, the, uh, the players really kind of turned on him because he didn't make any weights, he didn't come to any Tuesday practices, and this year we've had none of that. I mean, he just doesn't miss, he is accountable, he's a great kid, and we'll do anything for him, and he has made himself a lot better. Our strength of the team will be our skill guys, our running back. Love our quarterback, Jesse Brown. Left-hander started the end of the season as a sophomore last year. Our wide receivers, Brent Wicks, and our athletes, Chris Murray, who plays a little quarterback, a little running back, for the receiver. That's number two from last year. Uh, we feel like he can be really special on this level, and when he decides to go play at the next level. On defense, uh, my favorite player we have, and really on the field, is our fullback linebacker, Charles Jones. I feel like he's the captain of the team, number 47. He's involved in everything. He's uh, kind of like Coach Malone said, if he tells the kids to walk a mile, they'll jump right behind him and go. He is the heart of the team, and uh, we really like him. Weaknesses-wise, our kicking game. Last year, I think they said they were, I heard that last year's Coffee County team was three of six on extra points, and then after that, it just went two every time. And this year, we're not much better. We're really struggling to find a kicker. Um, we've had both men's and women's soccer teams looking for kickers. <coughs> we're, we're having trouble there. And then the, the major weakness that the whole coaching staff has come across is we have to teach them to win. They really don't know how to win yet. I think we can be good. I mean, I can sit up here and tell you that I think we're going to be good. I tell the kids every day, we're going to be good, and I just don't know if they believe me yet. They need some success. We scrimmaged Grundy County last Tuesday. And uh, did a good job, and I think they may be learning how to win. We got Sequatchie coming up this Tuesday, and uh, then we jamboree against Centennial, which will be a real test speed wise for us. We went out the fastest team around. On offense, we're going to run an I formation. Again, we'll be a lot like White County. Uh, we come from the same Gary Rankin coaching tree, so we run a lot of the same stuff. I've tried to uh, maybe switch up some. The name of some plays, but that's about it. Defense, I guess it's kind of a region thing. We're all running a 4 2 5, which is a 4 3 or a 4 4, depending on how you want to roll your safeties down. We'll be in the 4 2 5. 
Again, two more scrimmages, and then we start the season at Shelbyville. And Shelbyville last year hung 45 on Coffee County. So that will be a, a big test starting the season. Anything else? Any questions? Was the 45 that Shelbyville hung on Coffee County last year, was that due to their offensive coordinator? Or uh, or? I would say their offensive coordinator is probably the best looking coach on the field. I don't know how much college he knew, but he was – Hot little guy. All right, I have a follow-up question. Yes. Who's offensive coordinator Shelby Shelby? Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> uh, Coach, you, you, you talk about the kids uh, buying into the winning uh, program. How's the rest of the community buying into it? Our community's buying me 100%. They've been great. Our practices are loaded about every day with people circling the field. We've got people going out. I mean, it's become a, uh, it's become a thing to do at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Go and grill out, watch the sports, uh, sit around and talk and talk about what I'm doing wrong. So it's kind of been the community's great behind you and me and our, everything we've ever asked them to do, they've done. Uh, even we're working Bonnaroo. We have some guys in the community that have nobody on the football team that stepped up and said, Coach, we'll work, we'll help you do whatever you need to to raise money. So Manchester, the whole Coffee County has really got behind me and got behind the program and bought into what we're selling. Now if we can just turn it into some wins. They won't run me out of time. Coach, uh, your depth at skill. Uh, talk about your depth at skill positions. We've got decent depth. Our, our tailbacks, almost all of them are returning from last year, even the backups. So we'll be okay there. We lost Ethan Meyer. I think you guys from the coach here remember little Ethan. He was a little five-foot kid, five-foot nothing. Played a little bit of everything for him. He graduated. He was one we had to see leave. For the most part, we're returning all those skill guys and all their backups, so we'll be we'll be okay skill wise as a strength for us. Um, How are they looking in the weight room, especially the the guys in the line? Not bad. They've uh, we lift and, and condition just about every day. I mean, we have actually since we started pads August first, which is when everybody could. And that's when we started school too. So that's been hard. So when coaches go off to camp like you guys did, when we were in school, we could. So our way of camp was because of the heat, we would keep them from three to seven, and as soon as the temperature went down, one oh two, we'd get them outside. So for the first hour, we did nothing but lift and condition, and we've done that every single day, pretty much up till now. I mean, we'll do it again today. The only day we missed was part one of pitcher day, which I know all coaches hate. Changes in your schedule: Marshall County Independence. Got grab Marshall County, and this is the wrong year to grab them because they're supposed to be loaded with talent. They're returning just about everybody. So wouldn't you know, we pick up somebody who's returning everybody. And the Independence, what can you say about them? They're a Franklin school. They're out of that whole Williamson County region, so you know right now they can fly. I mean, they may not bring in the biggest kids, but anytime you light up and play Centennial, Brentwood, Franklin, Ravenwood on a week-to-week -week basis, you'll be pretty good. So, again... That, that schedule was set before I got here. I wish I had a little, wish we'd kept Lawrence County on schedule, but what are you going to do? Anything? All right. Thank you all again, and uh, next is Cookville. Great job.